Maganda hapon. Alright. I'll start with the story. Okay? Thank you. And how do we begin every story? Let's start with the once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a country. They called it the Pearl of the Orient. Cradle of the brave. Islands caught between sea and sky and bright blazing sun. And in this country, they told a story. Once, they said, there was a king and his fair queen. They said that the king was once wise and just, but power corrupted him. And his queen was blinded by the glitter of diamonds. And so for many years, the land wept. Until one warrior, braver than all the rest, stood his ground, went up against the evil king, and they threw that warrior away, far away, to a land where his shouts were muffled by the roaring tides. You know this story? Have you heard this before? Not yet, are you sure? So the warrior returned, flying home on the wings of morning. And when he was murdered, his blood walker, the land he loved. The story doesn't end there. Because after that, the warrior's widow stands up in one grand day where all the people gather to stand up against a tyrant. You remember the story? Does anyone know the story? Does it sound familiar? And so the tyrant fell and the warrior's widow stood among the people dressed in yellow to live in a yellow palace across the river. They called her a hero. Yeah. You know the story? Yes. This is the right story. <laughs> because other people will tell the story differently. Stories begin and end depending on the person who's telling the story. The happily ever after only happens and someone decides to stop after the happily ever after. But they say the story changes. Some say that there is no happily ever after, that the yellow king still sits on the throne, that there are many dead under the rule of the yellow king, that there are murders in Hacienda Luisita, and that a dynasty still stands to rule over the country that is the Pearl of the Orient. Do you know the story? I could be right, I could be wrong. It always depends on who is telling the story. And it depends where you start and where you end. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Pat Panelista. I'm a multimedia reporter for Rappler. And I'm Rappler's problem child, meaning that anything that comes out of my mouth is not necessarily the opinion of Rappler. <laughs> so blame me, not fair. But because it matters who tells the story, I'd like to tell you who I am, so that you know whether to believe me or not, and for you to know that my biases are my own, and not Robert's. So who am, I? who am I? I believe, I'll tell you what I believe, and that if you disagree, that's also fine. I probably will assume that you do. I believe in the reproductive health bill. I believe in the legalization of divorce. I believe in gay marriage and the possibility of future gay marriage. I mostly believe in the future legalization of marijuana. Yeah? Okay. When we fight, I will call on you. But mostly, I believe in the individual right to tell his own story. Every story ends when the storyteller decides the story doesn't matter. So let's start with the story I've been telling for a long time. On November 23, 2009, 58 men and women were massacred on a hillside in Apatuan, Mindanao. Some of them were journalists, some of them were mothers, some of them were fathers, some of them were just driving the vans before they were buried alive by yellow bathrooms on the hillside of Mindanao. 
Do you know the story? At this time, several years after, we tend to know who did the killings. We've seen their faces, but there is no justice yet. It's a story I've been telling, not because I'm a good person, or not because I believe I'm going to change the world by telling the story. I tell the story because I saw it, because I was there. And that's what we are as journalists. We are witnesses. We testify to what happened. Because if we do not say what we saw, nobody else will have seen it too. On November 23, we heard that 15, no, actually we heard that 24 journalists have been killed. Very few of us believe the story because we couldn't believe that that many journalists could die all at once. So when I heard the story, I want to put it in out. I felt it was important to see it. Also, I'm a problem child, so I don't listen when people tell me to do things or not to do things. So on November 25th, I was standing on the hillside of Apatuan. And the sight I saw is something I cannot forget. There were bodies that were falling from back doors in front of me. I never told my parents I was in Camino now. It's not the sort of thing you tell your parents. So, and because I knew I was just going to write about it, that they were never going to hear about it on television, I thought it was okay. But when I got there, they'd already found 40 bodies. The, the kill site had already, uh, was posted already with the yellow tape, the police tape. And they said, okay, this is the kill site. But then the families kept coming up the hill and they said, no, it's not yet done. I can't find my father, I can't find my mother, I can't find my sister. Please help me find their body. So they started digging. And that's when they realized the bodies were underground. Forensics said that some of them were buried still alive. So when I got there, I wasn't reporting. I was counting bodies. The bodies kept falling in front of me from the back pole, from the hill, from the place where they were buried. They kept dropping in front of me. The one thing I remember is a man. I'm told he was a young man. He was a good looking man. But when I saw the body, his waistline was over 70 inches already because the body had swollen underground. And there were women clinging to my arm because I thought it was a journalist. A journalist could save the world. They said, I can't find my dad. There was a woman who said, I cannot find my father. Please help. Until this day, the body of Reynaldo Bebot Moman has not been found. He is 58. For a long time, they said the body is 57. But Moman's teeth were found on the side. His ID was found. His jacket was found. And for many years, his daughter, the one I met on the side, has been trying to fight for the fact that her father is dead. Isn't that the most insane thing possible? That you're trying to seek justice by proving to people your father is dead. Because you cannot get justice if what? If you can't prove that injustice was done. So that's why, for a long time, we've been saying 58. 58. There were 58. Many people in the media were doing this. Many civil organizations, many NGOs. And last year, last year in court, the court recognized that 58 victims were killed in Apatuan Mindanao and 58 cases were filed against Apatuan. It's a very small victory, but it means the story is still being told. And that's why I'm here, to remind you that there are stories that still need to be told because we're alive. For as long as we're living, we owe it to the dead to tell their stories.